This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, drivers believed to be at the centre of a police investigation into race fixing will not compete in races this weekend. It's gold this time around for Wanaka free skier Nico Porteous, six months since claiming an Olympic bronze medal. And police identify the person responsible for starting a fire in a former central city Dunedin bar. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Holly Buchanan. Drivers believed to be at the centre of a police investigation into race fixing will not compete in races this weekend. Harness Racing New Zealand's fields for races at Addington and Winton in the coming days show horses usually driven by three high-profile drivers will be driven by other drivers. And seven people have been banned from every race course in the country in the wake of the investigation. Charges have been laid in relation to this event, race 11 at Nelson on June the 8th, which was won by Storm Prince, driven by champion driver Blair Orange. Another driver in the event has also been charged with manipulating the result of the race and causing losses to the betting public and other race participants. Detective Superintendent Tim Anderson says the police investigation has been widespread. As you would have seen from our statement earlier today, Police conducted a number of search warrants at eight properties in Christchurch and one each in Invercargill and Manawatu. These warrants were a result of a long-running investigation by the Police National Organised Crime Group. It's understood three more harness racing properties in Canterbury have been raided as part of Operation Inca, on top of searches across the country. The charge of race fixing is laid under the Crimes Act and carries a maximum penalty of up to seven years in prison. Anderson says their investigation has been lengthy. These warrants were the result of a long-running investigation by the Police National Organised Crime Group and uh, we are currently speaking to a number of people. In race 11 on June the 8th, Storm Prince was considered one of the pre-race favourites and driver Blair Orange has been accused by police of not attempting to win. There were 11 horses in the race, part of a two-day Nelson Racing Carnival. Police have confirmed seven people have been charged in relation to an investigation into alleged race fixing in the harness racing industry. In Dunedin, the South today. And two more cars have been targeted by tyre slashes overnight in Dunedin, bringing the total number of attacks to 20 in the past two weeks. Acting Inspector Craig Dennison says the latest slashings happened overnight in Kew and Concord and it remains unclear how the tyres were punctured. He says police are keeping an open mind regarding the motivation of the slashes but no suspects have been apprehended. Slashings have now been reported in the suburbs of Kew, Concord, Green Island and Carlton Hill as well as three separate attacks in Mosgill in one night. It's gold this time around for Wanaka free skier Nico Porteous. Just over six months since claiming an Olympic bronze medal in halfpipe, the teenager has stamped his mark on the Junior World Championship halfpipe competition held on his home mountain of Kadrona. He may be just 16 years old, but Wanaka free skier Nico Porteous was heavily favoured to claim gold in the Junior World Championship halfpipe competition. And after qualifying top for the final at Cadrona, the Olympic bronze medalist didn't disappoint. It's really, really cool game. Yeah, especially about home. It's really cool. But it wasn't all plain sailing for the local star. At the end of the first three runs, it was Norway's Bert Rood putting all the pressure on Porteous. But with a score of 93.8 in the second run, he secured the lead and didn't let go. I was a little bit, little bit stressed. Um, just kind of had to play those mind games and really make sure that I was feeling good myself. Um, in fourth place, but no, I was super happy. In the women's free ski, Estonia's Kelly Soldaru claimed her second junior world title this week, once again proving her class. I'm really happy. I, today I did my first uh, nines after my cell injury, so I'm pretty stoked about that. And despite struggling in practice, American Toby Miller's huge first run score was enough to see him take out the men's snowboard competition in Queenstown, the South today. A Welshman has allegedly badly damaged two cars and also caused significant damage to a third while driving nearly four times over the legal limit in Frankton on Monday night. 
Queenstown Sergeant Steve Watt says the 38-year-old recorded a breath alcohol level of 931 micrograms after crashing into a parked car in Lake Avenue just before midnight. The impact shunted the first car into another parked car, which was also damaged. The driver had just left a nearby tavern and was unhurt. The Welshman is on a working holiday and is expected to appear in court next week. Police say a fire at a former central city Dunedin bar was started by a homeless man last night. A senior firefighter at the scene says a small fire in an ornamental outdoor fireplace on the ground floor was extinguished without issue shortly after 7pm yesterday evening. Police say officers from the Criminal Investigation Branch spoke with a man after the fire was reported. The man is believed to have been sleeping homeless in the former bar and had set a fire in the premises. A police officer led one person away from the scene towards the Dunedin Central Police Station. He's due to appear in court. Still to come on the South today, Greymouth residents remain on a boil water notice. And 125 years on, ODT reporter Mike Houlihan looks back at a struggle for voting rights. Step into Shop on Carroll and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. <laughs> to sow seeds? Don't despair, the solution is at hand. Call Ready Lawn today for your year-round lawn needs. Call now on 03 486 1819. Electrify NZ Dunedin sell quality European designed e-bikes with reliable componentry so that you too can wear the e-bike grin. Call in for your complimentary test ride today or book online. Find us at 249 Cumberland Street, phone 021 035 9820. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489 2274. season we're proud to dress the region alex campbell menswear it fits roslyn mowers and heating are your local mass port heating agents and offer you a competitive quote on complete mass port fire installation come and see the mass port cromwell ultra low emission burner in action see you in store soon if you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Medical Centre offers everything for your family's needs. Whether you are travelling or coming in to discuss health symptoms, our medical staff provide the best of care. We offer Manage My Health, making booking an appointment or requesting a repeat prescription a breeze. We welcome families like yours. Give us a call today, phone 03 488 2754. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, 
accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. Welcome back. The whole of Greymouth remains on a boil water notice after a fault with the chlorine treatment system over the weekend. The town's main water reservoir dipped to nearly zero on Saturday and emergency services were called twice to the Coal Creek Water Treatment Plant to isolate the problem. Water use is still restricted and the Grey District Council says the boil water notice will remain until there's been three consecutive days of clear tests. This is the third incident with the chlorine treatment system this year and the council is set to conduct a full review. Last month marked 125 years since the main women's suffrage petition was tabled in Parliament. And the first of a two-part special feature, Otago Daily Times health reporter Mike Houlihan looks back at a struggle for voting rights in which Otago was front and centre. The Great Suffrage Petition of 1893 is a landmark constitutional document, weighing in at 546 pages and containing more than 25,000 signatures. It was the physical manifestation of public sentiment that women should have the vote. 125 years later, the stories of the Otago women who helped drive the petition's success are still remembered. For most New Zealanders, Kate Shepherd is the face of the suffrage movement. She has faces on the $10 bill and there are memorials to her around the place. And not to decry her noble efforts, but Dunedin and to a greater extent Otago was the heart of the suffrage movement. In the 1890s Dunedin was the largest city in New Zealand uh, and as such it was the place where the most signatures were gathered for the great petition of 1893. And it was thanks to efforts of women like Marion Hatton, whose grave I'm sitting beside right now, Helen Nicholl, whose grave is nearby, and Harriet Morrison from the Taylorists' Union, uh, who really helped get those petition signatures. Um, more than 8,000 Otago and Dunedin and Southland women signed the great petition of 1893. The suffrage movement began out of the temperance movement. Um, the two were very, very closely aligned. Um, and temperance, all these women, all of them were, were, were temperance activists before they became suffragists. The reason that temperance mo mo morphed into the, into the suffrage movement was because women very quickly figured out that parliament was where laws were made. And parliament was where the liquor laws in particular were made. And if they wanted to get liquor banned, they had to get law changes through parliament. After Marion and her husband Joseph arrived in Dunedin, they became active members of the Temperance Union. Uh, from there, they realised, Marion realised, that if she wanted to get the vote for herself, that she would have to take a different strategy. In 1892, she, Helen Nicholl, and other notables formed what was known as the Women's Franchise League. Uh, it was that organisation which was really one of the motivating forces behind garnering the petition uh, signatures in 1893 that helped get the women's vote over the line. She and Helen Nicholl toured tirelessly throughout Southland, Otago, uh, South Canterbury and also obviously throughout Dunedin gathering signatures for the petition. Um, both of them were softly spoken women uh, but became well known platform orators despite that and were in the public eye the faces of the suffrage movement in Dunedin. Uh, both of them were quoted extensively in the newspapers at the time uh, and were engaged in high profile letters to the editor and debates with leading male politicians of the day who were opposed to suffrage. They were quite different people. Um, they had things in common and things that were quite different. Um, Her Marian Hatton was the oldest by about 20 years at least and she was uh, 57. She was the only family woman of the three of them. She'd brought up six children, five boys and a girl by that stage. When she started and when she was fully engaged in the campaign in the beginning of the 90s. There was one, they all came from the British Isles, they were all born overseas. Uh, Helen Nicholl came from Edinburgh and was a free church Presbyterian. And she came out with her father and nine brothers and sisters. Um, he was a He's sometimes described as a gardener, but he was really a horticulturalist. And he did very well here, he worked for some of the big men and uh, bought land, which he gave to his, or rather bequeathed to his unmarried daughters at the end, including Helen. And Harriet Morrison was a tailoress, trained by her tailor father. And she came out quite late, actually, 1874, when she was 12. Uh, so. Uh, they're different in that way, one, one English, one Scottish, one Irish. Um, they all came from, however, highly achieving, cult, uh, useful sort of backgrounds. Today, this is the Dowling Street car park. 
But in 1892, this is where City Hall stood, just one of the pivotal places in the uh, Great Suffrage Petition. It was here in April the 12th, 1892, that the meeting that led to the creation of the Women's Franchise League was held. Um, more than 40 women, ladies and gentlemen, according to the Otago Daily Times, were on the stage, and the hall was full to overflowing as people heard the great and good of the suffrage movement, talking about the fight that was to come. The che meeting was chaired by Marion Hatton, who told the crowd, We women can come before you, citizens of the Eden, claiming the right to vote in respect of any law we have to obey. If the laws claim our obedience, then we claim the right to have a voice in making the laws. If we are made responsible for the liabilities of citizenship, then we claim the first right of a citizen, the right to vote. And as long as women are made in all cases as men, amenable to the laws of our country, so long will we continue to demand the right of womanhood suffrage. She was joined on stage by Harriet Morrison of the Taylorists' Union, who told the crowd, women formed nearly one half of the adult population and they had to obey the laws the same as men and should have a voice in the framing of the laws they were called upon to obey. Women had to pay taxes the same as men, and taxation without representation was tyranny. It had been urged by the opponents of women's franchise that a woman's sphere was her home. And could all women be offered a home? No, they could not. Women were compelled to go out into the battle of life to earn their daily bread. The law of competition and the factory system compelled women to leave their home and face life's battles as wage earners. They had the right to a voice in the framing of those laws that controlled competition, and they could not have a voice or be properly represented unless they had the ballot in their hands. After the break on the South Today, dozens of people from Otago become New Zealand citizens, and we take a look at the secondary school's sports tournament in Dunedin this week. Roslyn Mowers and Heating are your local Massport heating agents and offer you a competitive quote on complete Massport fire installation. Come and see the Massport Cromwell Ultra Low Emission Burner in action. See you in store soon. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. Too late to sow seeds? Don't despair, the solution is at hand. Call Ready Lawn today for your year-round lawn needs. Call now on 03 486 1819. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. The Green Island Medical Centre offers everything for your family's needs. Whether you are travelling or coming in to discuss health symptoms, our medical staff provide the best of care. We often manage my health, making booking an appointment or requesting a repeat prescription a breeze. We welcome families like yours. Give us a call today, phone 03 488 2754. Every Kiwi deserves a reliable garage door. Rely on Garador to protect your important stuff. Just like Darren. His Garador keeps his favourite ride in mint condition. We have a huge range at affordable prices. Visit our website for a free consultation. We stand behind every door. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits.
Welcome back. Farmers say dog attacks have ripped through two Otama farms, killing more than 25 hoggets and ewes in the past three months. Farmer Donnie Nicholson was the worst hit, losing 16 hoggets in the first attack at his farm in April. Two weeks ago, another attack killed five pregnant ewes. Gore District Councillor and farmer John Gardiron lost three of his ewes in a dog attack about two weeks ago. He says a ewe costs between $200 and $250, while a lamb is worth up to $170 this season. Coming into lambing season, both farmers are concerned about the dog returning. 70 people from Otago took the big step to become New Zealand citizens today. The ceremonies are a regular occasion in Dunedin, but today's event was marked with a special performance. Celebrating his new citizenship in style, local identity Robert Fugar showing just how much it means to become a New Zealander. He's one of 70 local residents who were officially granted New Zealand citizenship at a ceremony in Dunedin today. It's a dream come true. Oh, hey, yeah. I'm really, really be looking forward to this day because I've always loved being in this country, New Zealand. Beautiful people and I'm so happy to be officially part of the, the family. Fugar's been living here for five years and says the occasion was a good chance to bring some Ghanaian culture to the south. I came here you know, with my family and uh, as a musician, as you saw today that I performed, for the first time I heard that um, there's, there's a little performance at a New Zealand citizenship uh, ceremony. And as a professional drumming tutor, he's looking forward to continuing to pass on his skills to the people of his adopted country. I have started five years back um, sharing my love for African music and dance uh, all over New Zealand. I live in the Dedan, but I travel all over New Zealand, so I'll continue doing that because it's all about the community, bringing community together, and that is what my music is all about, so I'll continue doing that. Today's ceremony also saw people from as far as field as Russia and Panama officially becoming Kiwis. And they need in the South today. Ice hockey is among the sports being played at the secondary school's sports tournament in Dunedin this week. Eight teams are pitting their skills against each other in a sport that's growing in popularity across the country. Waka Tipu defending their goal against Mackenzie combined. The Dunedin Ice Stadium has seen eight different teams vying for supremacy during this week's annual secondary school ice hockey tournament. Mackenzie combined are the defending champions, but this year's team has quite a different makeup of players, including two girls from Dunedin. The B grade trophy was last won by Mackenzie combined, so we're actually the defending champions, um, but that was quite a different team. It was mostly from Mackenzie College, whereas these students are drawn from Mackenzie College, Timaru Boys High School, Timaru Girls High School and um, from Otago Girls High School. Adam says the mix of boys and girls is a common sight in New Zealand school ice hockey teams. It's not unusual, there's quite a lot of girls, there's not as so many girls in our team as usual, we generally have about three or four. And while ice hockey is notorious for fights breaking out in overseas matches, she says ice hockey at school grades is not a rough sport. Ice hockey at this grade it isn't rough and dangerous and actually, because my son's played ice hockey for years, very few injuries, really very few injuries in ice hockey compared to other sports. I would say it's probably safer than rugby actually. The tournament finishes up at the Dunedin Ice Stadium tomorrow. In Dunedin, for the South Today. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Paul. Hi Holly. I've got a couple of cute photos here. Um, so uh, these little guys, uh, chinchillas. Ooh, very um, cute. <laughs> they are. Uh, interesting, uh, Environment Southland is proposing taking them off the pest management register because ah. um, I didn't even realise they were on it. No. But um, they don't really pose a threat apparently to wildlife. And yet mm. I just, just raised this one. Um, Cats, obviously, uh, because they're considering adding those to the pest register in some ah. places. So it's just interesting. I just yeah. thought we got a good story yeah. on that on the regional well, page. Cute photos tomorrow. too. They are cute, cute <laughs> photos. Are good. Um, some some breaking news at the moment. Um, Claire Curran has been um, defending herself in Parliament about using her Gmail account mm. for work emails. I'm not quite sure how that's okay. going to play out this evening, but. 
keep an eye on that one. Yeah. And also today there's been a lot on the racing fixing yes. scandal in, in Canterbury. Um, so we're keeping a close eye on that. Johnny Turner's been writing about that today okay. too. So they're two big stories for tomorrow. Mm. So um, not quite sure where they're going to go yet. That's the joy of this right, job. Right, we'll watch the space. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. And time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by MoMap. Beginning with tonight's southern view of a 12-year-old pup called Shah, just relaxing there. Looking at the situation, fine weather through the weekend as high pressure east of Otago brings clear skies and onshore breezes. Looking to the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport can expect clear skies and a high of 16 degrees. To the northeast now, Nelson and Blenheim are in for a little cloud, also a high of 16 degrees. And Canterbury now, cloud in Kaikoura and a high of 10 degrees. Christchurch, cloud for you and a high of 11. While those in Ashburton can plan for cloud and a high of 11 degrees as well. Heading to the south now, light winds, fine weather and highs of 9 to 11 degrees for Balclutha, the Catlins, Gore and Lumsden. Across to central Otago, light winds and fine weather for Alexandra, Queenstown, Wanaka and highs between 8 and 9 degrees. Tiano, you can expect a break into double digits with 11 degrees, you lucky things. In northern Otago, light winds and fine for Omaru, Timaru, Omarama and Twizel with highs of 9 or 10 degrees. In Dunedin, cloudy on the coast tonight with clear skies and an overnight low down to 5. Fine and sunny during the afternoon with a high of 9. Fine and sunny with light winds on Friday with moderate nor'easters, again a high of 9 degrees. In the Cargill, fine and cold tonight, also with an overnight low of a freezing 0 degrees, so don't forget the electric blanket. Mostly fine and sunny tomorrow with 12 degrees and a low of 1. And a bit of light wind thrown into the mix on Friday. That's all from the team here at The South Today. For the latest news from the southern region, head online and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, at channel39.co.nz and at odt.co.nz. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.